connected. So and I'll start my drawing here. And this is just working on an Arches watercolor block, uh, hot press, smooth paper. And I'm just working in pencil here, just as everyone would blocking in my central form. Uh, this is the detail, uh, getting a little closer on the detail. As I'm drawing, I'm always thinking about making sure that I'm uh, bringing the viewer's eye to the place I want it to go. Um, I want all the focus in this piece to be on her eyes and her face and her expression. This furthers that going down into uh, making sure as I put in some of the values that I'm also uh, maintaining the focus in the place I want you to be. I don't want you to be over here. I don't want you to be over here. I want you to be right here. <clears throat> now I'm going into those values. So um, this is those of you who are, who are starting your going from your underdrawing to your values. This is where, uh, you know, I find it incredibly helpful to work in a very classical uh, technique of putting in your values in sepias and, uh, and um, you know, this, this sort of structural underpinnings of values. So I'm, I'm knocking in where I want my dark areas. I put in my darkest dark right away, and that's the eyes, and that will... Um, always be sort of my key place where I'm going back to keep focus on those eyes. And also you'll see some random things happening in here where I have coated the drawing with matte medium before I started going in in the oil that seals the paper. But uh, there's some brush strokes and then there's this spot up here that didn't get the matte medium that is soaking in some oil. There's some other random effects happening. And it's important to remember that you're in control of the paint. And even if something random and unexpected happens, you're still in charge and you can make it do what you want. And sometimes those sweet sort of random things that happen can be added in for the kind of richness of the overall experience. So I'm again, building up my values a little more, trying to maintain the focus of the piece. I'm going in and cutting out a little more detail, a little more volume in these, these dark areas. Still remembering that I want the focus on the face and the eyes. Building up those values some more, starting to soften some of my edges where I want things to go blurry here on the shoulder, up at the top, around this edge very deliberately breaking the line so it crisps here and I lose it here and then some of the darker values get put in in the, in the areas by her shoulder and neck but still the focus on the, is on the eyes and the whole goal is while I'm working up my values and my underpainting and my details I'm also maintaining the feel of the face that I loved so much. I never lose the feel of that face that I wanted that I had in my head that the reference spoke to I'm trying to maintain that at every point through the process. It's my key. It's my emotional key. It's my, it's my driving force. If I keep my eye on that and make sure that that's my goal while I build my values and use my values and not just to clear up what the viewer sees in the space, but to uh, emotionally connect the audience through value storytelling, um, then, then I know I'm, I'm going to be successful. Um, Again, pushing those values a little more, making sure that things are starting to pull up and those, those rich values, like very monochromatic still, very little palette. I, I mean, very little uh, color in my palette. I'm just using very, very small choices all the way through till pretty far down and incorporating this uh, additional element, this other character of the octopus and he is very interesting, but he is not going to be the main character. She's the main character. So he sits back in space still, and I want him to maintain his sitting back in space. But even though he sits back in space, the re I handle his drawing delicately, carefully, and with a lot of thought. So value-wise, he'll knock back. But my intent will be remain very clear once the viewer gets to that area. Nothing's going to be fudged. Nothing's going to be not considered. It's very important that even if there's an element that's a secondary element, it's considered and thoughtful and decided upon, not random. And, it, and if you have made up elements, they have to be convincing and based in some other good pieces of reference that you have kind of, you know, used within the creation of that character to make it convincing. So I may have taken leaps with the shapes of certain things, but other things like the shape of the, the, um, 
the suckers on the tentacles and things and all of how the pattern lays out on them that's all very referenced the shape of the eyes the the bulbous nature of the eyes and the, the shape of the iris and all of these lovely little details so <clears throat> and i'm still you know still and this is still in the value stage the color is the for me it it comes much later if you do the work with the value first and you really spend your time in there and work up your details the color is not going to control the piece it is going to be a tool that you use for your piece okay here i'm, I'm building in some more uh, color laying in some underpinnings of the color i had in mind warming up the cheeks laying in some whites of the skin getting a little more opaque in places but keeping the value structure clean and clear more of the same i want these blurry edges to show up more dark and misty that's so I'm, I'm going in and glazing in some of those sepias and van dyke browns and stuff and 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 stumbling it over there breaking up my edges wiping out some a little bit to give that glowy effect laying in some more opaques building up the skin tones with uh, thin layers of white more of the same just building up slowly considered never losing sight of my goals never totally obscuring my drawing and then this next stage is interesting because one night late at night i thought well what if i go really bright what if i go really bright i, I was kind of craving something really bright to have happen and i woke up the next morning i really hated it i was like oh that was just the wrong choice this happens to everybody um and so you just in these moments that you realize, well, I've really made the wrong choice for my piece. But because I've been so careful and I haven't I haven't gone real heavy and obscured the drawing on the important areas, the nature of the octopus, the face, the facial expression, all of these things are still there. It's just a matter of getting that kind of garish color out there. So I got my solvents and a rag out and I wiped it all out. And, and then it came back to here. So. When you do wipe out these things, you remember, you know, sometimes even if little bits end up left behind, wiping out something isn't the end of the world. Sometimes it's just what's needed and it can leave a hallmark of something interesting in the underlayers even after you've wiped it out. So I wiped out 99%, but then there's these little kind of pops and, and, and things of where that, that turquoise just sort of hung on. And I like that and I let that dry. And then I went in with my texture, which I do on a lot of pieces now, all this, this under texture with a little brush and thinned out paint, covered everything, got that, that you know, under layer texture that I'll paint on top of from here. Takes a while and yes, it's just by hand and you just a little brush and, and you know, takes a couple hours. Sorry, with what kind of paint do you do that? Uh, this, oh, this, this texture, this, uh, it's a thin brush, just like a number one brush and paint thinned out with Gamsol. And, uh, and then okay, that, so you use, uh, go ahead. Uh, on, on the brown ones, you use the brown color and on brown, the blue yeah. was the blue or something. No, it's all brown, brown mixed with a little black or just, or just sometimes just sepia. Or Van Dyke Brown. Okay. Wow. Yep. Yep. Thanks. And it, it randomizes the surface. I, I, I like the randomized quality that has, you know, things happen on it. It makes things unpredictable and, and it builds in another layer. I just love it. And then I, this one, this is right before the finish is, is complete. And so, so you can see the textures I let before I'm working on this, I'm going to let that texture dry, that those lines dry, because if you work over them while they're wet, they're going to blur. But at this point now I can go in and start popping up those finished details. This is where I have the most fun. It's when you start like going after all this glorious stuff and all these details and, and the little details in the eye and bringing up those final glazes on the face and warming up a little more in the cheeks and glazing back all down here. So, it, so all the attention comes right up here and then drifts back into dark. Um, and then that is the finish with the final coat of, uh, you know, gal kid to seal it and a final warm glaze. I, I think I mixed in, I might have mixed in a little bit of golds into the gal kid to just unify everything. 
And so that that is soup to nuts. That's that's how a piece gets done. And this process happens with almost all of my pieces. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of never fail. If you get your values in quick, you deal with your drawing throughout. You slowly introduce your colors, and then you wrap up the sweet details. That's that's the the whole thing. Does anybody have any questions? 